All right, so I take a look at this. The same idea of what I did on the last problem. I'm looking and saying, is there something that each of these two terms has in common that I can factor out? Yeah, they both have a b squared plus 1. Now remember, you can always make anything times 1. And that's what we're going for in this problem, is that idea that I'm going to factor a b squared plus 1 out of the first term, negative 2b, and out of the second term, that being uh, b squared plus 1 times 1. So I'll pull it out. That leaves me b squared plus 1. Uh, it's it right there. I'm going to pull it out of the expression. I'm going to undistribute it. So now what's left? Negative 2b plus 1. And that's what's left. How did you get the plus 1? Uh, there's this one. Remember, anything can be written as that number times 1. So if there's nothing there, yes, you're right. Right, so there's nothing there. You can always assume there's a plus 1 on it. I'd say it just like not there, though. Right. Uh, that plus one does make a difference. Remember the analog we talked about on the board? If, if I had negative 2 times x plus x, and I factored an x out, I would have x, negative 2b, and then plus what? 1. Because x divided by x just leaves 1, because there's an understood 1 in front of every variable. Can you draw the arrow towards your left? Hmm? Okay. B squared plus one. Yeah. B squared plus one. Then B squared plus one. No, it's just B squared plus one. The same reason that when I factor that x out, it's just x. It's not x squared. Because I, because every fact every result shares that factor, when I pull that factor out, I'm only pulling it out once from each. If I was pulling out twice from each, then I'd say squared. You got that plus one because you're plus one. Minus. Right. There's always an assumed times one. Same reason when I wrote the analogy of thinking of that b squared plus one as, as just x. When I pulled the x out, it would leave one because there's one x. Now, there's one more catch. I've got a leading coefficient here of negative one, right? We don't want negatives We're on, on the fronts of these. So I'm going to pull that negative out last. So that means I'm going to be looking at negative 1, b squared plus 1, 2b minus 1. Yeah. Now the thing to, to remember here, sure. I divide out a negative 1. That's this negative 1 over here. Pulling that negative 1 out of the negative 2b plus 1 changes all the signs because I don't want a negative 1 on that front end. I thought you divided b squared plus 1 by negative 1. Nope. You only, oh, you only divided the negative 2b yeah. plus 1 by negative right. 1? Right. Oh. I only pulled it out of that one term. Now, I could have ran it this way, and it would have been kind of okay. b squared plus 1, because I didn't change it, times a negative 1 times 2b like that. So I can see that negative 1 came from these, this term over here. We don't usually write it that way. The better answer is the one above it. And that's because of the rule I'm not allowed to have a negative on this leading term right here. That guy can't be negative. So we pop it out. So which one's the right one? The boxed one would be the best answer. I don't. Can I go get one? Sure. From Office. The big idea with these ones in particular is this idea of seeing an expression that's common to both factors and, and pulling it out. Yeah. Let me pull it out. 